our internet. Last year I took part in Sugary Doo's Quilt Along and I finished the quilt top and it looked really good and then I put it aside to quilt later because it's very big and a bit intimidating. <laughs> but I've decided who I want to give it to and that has imposed a bit of a deadline on getting it finished. So it's time to get it off that UFO pile and onto my sewing machine. And that means I need to get it basted. I pulled the quilt out and now I remember one of the reasons I put it away. The proportions are a bit weird. It's about 90 inches long, which is a good size, but it's only 70 inches wide, so not quite wide enough for a queen size bed. But if I add borders to make it wider, that's going to make it too long. I think I have a plan. I'm going to add a narrow border all the way around, and then use scraps of the fabric I'd used in the quilt to make a thin strip of colour down each side. And then I can use the last of the background fabric to make a wide outer border down the sides. That should bring it into more of a square shape. I think that works. It's a massive quilt now though. It's 94 inches high and 88 inches wide. So how do you base such a huge quilt? I'll show you the method I use. I based all my quilts on the kitchen table. With a smaller quilt it's easy to keep all your layers nicely lined up and centred. But with a big quilt like this, you need a bit of help. So the first thing I do is make a guide. I tape two pieces of wooden skewer to the table, approximately in the centre. They don't have to be perfectly centred, but they do need to be at right angles to each other and parallel to the ends of the table. I tape them down and run my fingernails along the edge of the tape to make sure it's well tucked in so that I'll be able to feel the skewers through the thickness of the quilt. Next, I fold my backing in quarters and finger press creases along the folds at the centre. That gives me some lines that mark the centre of the quilt and most importantly are parallel to the edges. So now I can line them up with the skewers and know that the backing is square on the table. Once the backing's square and lying flat, I use big bulldog clips to clamp it to the table so it won't move while I'm positioning the batting. I repeat those same steps with the backing, folding it in quarters and creasing along the fold lines. Once the batting is centred and squared, I can move the bulldog clips so that I'm holding down the batting as well as the backing. And then I just repeat it again with the quilt top. Even with all three layers on, I can still feel the skewers well enough to be able to line everything up. As a final check, I can lift up each side of the quilt from the floor and just make sure that all the edges of the different fabrics are lining up and there's about the same gap between backing and batting and quilt top on each side. That all looks good. So now I can start basting. I'm only going to worry about the part of the quilt that's on top of the table. I'll deal with the rest later. Once that section's basted, I take off the clips and gently slide the quilt over so a new section is on top of the table. The weight of the fabric hanging off the edges will keep it pretty flat, but if you do think there are any wrinkles, you can just gently tug on each layer to flatten them out. Then it's just a matter of gradually making your way over the quilt. When you get to the edges, you just slide the quilt far enough so the edge of the quilt top is just along the edge of the table. If you're careful, you can slide a bulldog clip over so it just holds the edge of the top in place, but you've still got access to the entire top to pin it. <sighs> well, that was a bit of a mission. <laughs> now I remember why I had procrastinated for so long on basting it. <laughs> and of course now the really hard part begins because I've got to somehow quilt that massive, massive quilt on my little home sewing machine. But I've done it before on big quilts, so I know it's possible. It just takes patience. But that is something for the next video. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I'll see you next time. Kakite internet. Mm -hmm.